Let's talk a little about composition, more specifically how it relates to art, right? Because, you know, this is an art channel. So let's give ourselves a baseline. Let's look at a definition of composition in art. Now, composition is the term given to a complete work of art and more specifically to the way in which all its elements work together to produce an overall effect. Put simply, anything you do to create a piece is part of your composition, from the part that you start thinking about it, to when you're choosing a paper size, to when you're finishing it and what the overall story is, this is all composition. So that being said, let's start from the beginning. And yes, I truly mean the beginning. So we're looking at size and dimension of the paper that you choose. Now, why this is important is for several reasons, but of course you have to realize that if you're going to be a working artist, you're going to be given dimensions. You're going to be given restrictions to work in, right? And that restriction can be anything from working on a movie poster to a book cover to a comic book page for actual comics or a newspaper. So everything there has dimensions and restrictions. Now, another important part of knowing what size you want to work comes down to also your thumbnails. Now, if you don't know thumbnails, we're going to talk about it a little bit in this video, but a little later. But I just want to say, all right, right here off the bat, if you don't know what dimensions you're about to work on, your thumbnails are not going to work. They're not going to translate to your finished piece. They might be OK. They might help you out. But it's a lot more helpful if you know what size your eventual finished piece is going to be. And then you work in that dimension shrunk down. So let's explore thumbnails a little bit. So here's how to set up a thumbnail. And I just kind of want to give a really quick warning here. This isn't going to be a video about thumbnails. I can do that in the future, but we're just going to quickly breeze through it here. So let's say our director or whoever we're working for has given us direction to work on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Probably not going to happen. That's standard printer size. So I'm just kind of sticking with something easy here. Now, if you guys are working in this dimension and all of a sudden you start just kind of exploring thumbnails and you're giving yourself boxes like this or you're giving yourself Instagram square boxes or maybe really long, thin and narrow boxes and you're drawing these figures or whatever you're drawing in here, um, exploring these poses within these dimensions that you gave yourself. When it comes time to like, oh, you know what? This is the one I like. It's perfect. Let me go ahead and transfer it to my piece. So then you bring it over to your piece and you try to enlarge it. So that way you don't really have to think about it too much. And look, you barely covered half the dimensions that you're supposed to work in. Now, this might not be a big deal in some cases, but a lot of cases, what are you going to do with all this negative space that you just created up here or wherever you end up placing this figure? Because now you have to figure all this out because it's part of your composition. So let's clear the board and let's try this one more time. So we know that we have to work in an eight and a half by 11 size. So what you're going to do is you're going to either figure out what eight and a half and 11 looks by shrunk down. Or if you're working digital, you can always take those dimensions, copy it over and then just shrink it down to whatever size you want to work in. And then you can just take that and copy and paste it. Now, again, thumbnails aren't necessarily meant to be super, super accurate. You do want to have a nice looseness with your thumbnail. It's kind of the point of thumbnails, but it's just easier and it's going to be more direct if you know that when you fill up this space with whatever you're filling it up with, that it will fit eventually into this space and you have less to think about. Now, a lot of you might have just rolled your eyes as you see orientation on top of the screen there, thinking that this is pretty basic, but you'd be surprised how many people I have talked to that don't really understand the difference here. When setting up your paper, you have two types that you can set up a piece of paper. You have portrait and you have landscape. Portrait, landscape, portrait, landscape. Please just learn and understand this. It doesn't necessarily mean because this mode says landscape, you should only use this one for landscape and vice versa. It doesn't just mean because this says portrait that you should only do portraits in it. Okay. It's just what the orientation is called and please practice both. Stop drawing in only one orientation. You're going to really put yourself into a corner. Now, the number one thing you should consider with composition is story. So let's take a look at a commission piece I did. So I did this piece for a book cover. Now we have to remember in certain cases this was for a book cover so I don't have a whole story to tell. I can't do a comic about what they asked me to do. So I had to tell a story within one image and that's going to be the key within composition. Telling your story with whatever limitations you're given and understanding some tips along the way. So really quickly, I'll just kind of break down what I wanted to think about here. And then we're going to talk about tips that I used in this and other tips that you can use within your composition. 
Now, pretty obviously, I hope you guys see that your eye goes right here because the story is all about this pendant. But the story's not just about the pendant, right? You also have this mysterious Harry Potter forehead scar dagger, and you also have this book here. Could be a spell book, who knows? What is it, right? So all of these elements were adding up and making this main object more mysterious. All of a sudden there's a storytelling element and there's also an element of wonder. So how do we get great compositions and how do we get great storytelling moments? What are some composition tricks and tips that we can use? One great compositional trick is the idea of setting up a foreground, a middle ground, and then of course some sort of background. Now in this picture, I'm kind of cheating that a little bit. We really just have a foreground and then what would kind of fall into the category of background, even though I do have a little storytelling element here. But what this does compositionally is it places you within the story. We are on this cliffside with these three people looking over. Another great compositional trick, and you're gonna see every artist that you've known, every movie you ever watch again, using this trick over and over and over, and it's rule of thirds. So if you guys have not already started using this within your artwork, I really highly recommend that you start. And this is basically just the principle that things are more interesting if they're placed off to one side rather than placed somewhere in the middle. We don't ever want to place things in the middle. Okay, that's not actually true. You can have things that are placed in the middle and a lot of people use that very well. And it is also a good framing device to have something in the middle. It tells you to look there, but it's too convenient. So when you're placing a figure and you're doing a composition, see what it would look like if you placed something that is kind of stuck to these points. Usually you just want to pick two. So that way you kind of have a good idea. So you can see here, I landed this hand right here on the, and the bow and arrow on that second line. And then over here, we have the action part going on where she's grabbing her arrows. It frames the picture nicely and you get a good sense of movement and action going on. Now, another great device that you can use is known as framing. So here's a little sequence I did for a personal storyboard. In this sequence, you had a cartoony spaceship land, the door opens, which gave me a nice frame, right? Whatever I put in this, you're going to look directly at. And then of course, we zoom in and it's now perfectly framing my character peeking through. So you don't have to stick to just the boundaries of whatever size paper or dimensions you're using digitally, but you can also create frames within your own piece that again, it's like a frame within a frame, brings all the attention right here to whatever it is you want us to look at. Now, another fantastic tool is going to be leading the eye. Now, this is where I'm literally going to put a leash on your eye and walk it to what I want you to look at. Um, that's a little ex extreme of a saying, but let me just kind of explain here. A couple things going on in this story work panel. First thing is all these directional lines, okay? It's just perspective, it's just going down, but you know that this perspective is here, whether or not you are good at perspective and all of it is pointing right to these blurred out headlights. So you know, regardless of if you can figure out that's a car or not, regardless of if you know what that is, you know that something is going on there because everything, including this framing device here is making you look at it. But that's not the only way you can lead the eye. As humans, we're naturally curious to see what other people are looking at. So the fact that I have Marty here looking back at this car, we naturally and completely unconsciously look to where he's looking. It's a pretty great trick. And if you guys go back and watch any of your favorite movies, any of your favorite comics, you're going to see something like this used all the time. Another tool you can use is shapes. And I'm not too ashamed to admit it that I did definitely take this one from David Finch's composition video. It's a really good one. Okay, we all use the same tricks as artists and we all learn from each other. So here we go. So putting your composition in within shapes can give you a natural hierarchy and kind of a dominance in your scheme. So here I'm gonna use a triangle based shape to kind of give myself an overall storytelling of you got the center figure and then you have the less dominant figures that are filling up the story and the space. Now, obviously triangles have a pretty dominant side to them and it's really easy to kind of lead into a dominant figure. But what if we tried with a more squared off figure pose? So for all these examples, I'm kind of using someone just placed in the center. And because I'm taking inspiration from David Finchies, they're all kind of comic bookish, you guys will see. But the idea here is like, okay, we don't have a triangle, we're gonna use a square. How can we still have a hierarchy of shapes without that obvious point to kind of guide us 
to smaller figures. Well, you can use multiple shapes within your composition. So here I'm gonna use kind of a rectangle and then a smaller rectangle in the background. And this could be a couple things. You can fill it again with figures, you know, secondary characters or the, the villains or whatever it is in the background. Or you can come in and fill it with a cityscape and have kind of a night Batman-ish vibe going on in behind him. So this is all fine and dandy, but you're probably thinking to yourself now, well, how the hell do I study this or practice or whatever this looks like, right? And it's kind of simple, actually. One of the best ways to do it is to just copy the masters. And what I mean by masters in this case is pick any movie you like. It can be animated, live action, whatever. Find some scenes that you love and break them down. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna pick a couple of my favorite movie scenes or just movie scenes that I found on Google Images. I'm going to work within a set boundary. So I'm gonna give myself some, you know, widescreen bars or um, whatever it is. Remember, if you're working from ET, we didn't do widescreen back then, right? So depending on what generation movie you're using, you're gonna to have to have a different size thumbnail. We talked about this, guys, we talked about it. <laughs> Once you have that set up, we're going to put the pictures off to the side, keep them small, and we're gonna work nice and rough. This first one will go through a little slower and then we'll speed up as we go. So first thing, throw on some rule of thirds. This is gonna help you to understand the rule of thirds better if you can place it on other images. Next, we're working with background, middle ground, and foreground. So I have my three colors here, black, gray, and light gray. Um, and then from there, you're just gonna study the picture. And you're just gonna break it down to its essence. And I really wanna emphasize that. Choose a tool, you can see here, I'm using like a nice chunky line tool. And this is gonna force me to not get detailed. And you know if you've seen my videos that I'm all about that detail. But we're going to just use a tool that keeps it simple. We're gonna keep it simple and scratchy. We're really not trying to do anything realistic or beautiful here. If you guys wanna go beautiful, you can. But remember, the whole point of this is just kinda of understand composition and to break things down. So just let yourself explore and don't hold yourself to such a high standard on this. What you're gonna see through some of these pictures is, well, I'm going to do some of them in black and white. Some of them, you do have a clear foreground, middle ground, background. Some of them, you only have one or the other, or maybe two. So some will be black and white. Some will incorporate all of these values. Now in this iconic shot from The Matrix, we have Neo squaring off with Agent Smith from the first movie. And one, this is one of the greatest movies to look at if you're thinking about composition because every single shot in this movie was so well put together, um, just piece by piece. And I, I really mean that. So if you guys can look at Matrix at the very least, we really should be looking up any movie and just being ready to fully explore it. So some of these shots are gonna give me the chance to talk about other compositional elements that I didn't get the chance to fit into this video because there's a lot of them and I can't talk about all of them in one video. But this one is displaying a pretty iconic and pretty spot on Dutch angle. Now you've probably heard of Dutch angle before but you might not know what it is and it's literally just when the camera is tilted and it creates a feeling of suspense. Um, it's just because, you know, we don't see the world tilted and just because someone tilted the camera, we now have the sense of something's wrong. Um, it's kind of just unconscious that it happens and it can add a lot of tension to any moment that you want to add tension to. If you guys need examples, watch scary movies. They probably use it a lot. But you'll also see this in really any kind of action movie or anything where they're trying to build up a suspenseful moment. Now from here, I was kind of trying to explore where things are placed here. So we have a couple compositional things here, not just the Dutch angle, we have a framing device. She's framed by the door and everything behind the door is nice and bright and lighting her up from behind. So we have a nice kind of almost silhouetted figure which really stands out to us. And we even have some of that staircase kind of playing with that perspective thing I was talking about where it's pointing pretty much straight at her, right? So I kind of went in just to touch this up, figured that the doorway and the entrance is kind of part of the foreground, just like her. And from there, I just kind of added a little bit of detail. So remember that 
as humans, we tend to be naturally curious. So as we see here, we got things looking off at a cliff. And so naturally we're looking off at that cliff, but there's other compositional elements going on here because they still want us to be looking at these characters. And of course the car, which if you've seen these movies, some people would say that these cars are characters within the movie. So you can see that we're also following the rule of thirds where we have pretty harshly that car right on the rule of thirds. And then he is leaning pretty close now, a couple other compositional elements is we do have those leading lines coming in, right? So these are intentional. This was probably green screen, so someone put these in digitally, and it's the little hills here, or the cliff sides, or sand dunes, whatever they are, creating literal arrows pointing at our character. All right, looking at Matrix again, because again, you know, I said perfect shots no matter what. So we have a pretty silhouetted shot here, and this is kind of breaking that rule that I said don't put things in the middle. It's smack dab in the middle. Um, but again, like I said, it, it works. Just try not to overuse it. If you use it all the time, just push yourself. That's all I'm saying. But we have a uh, picture here where, again, everything is just silhouetted and a perfect framing device of what I just threw in here, which is that parking garage or the garage tunnel. And then you have the idea of a silhouetted figure looking at the car. So now you're back and forth between these two elements and wondering what's going on. It's great storytelling. It's within a movie, but even just looking at this frame, you can kind of get a picture of what's happening. Taking it back to ET. So we do have a different orientation on our screen here. Um, Remember that everything in this is still intentional. The reason that it was shot like this was to give an extreme perspective and it kind of used that triangular shape that we talked about earlier, using that shape method to create a very hard look at making ET dominant. And there's a couple things. You have the triangular shape, you have ET's head sitting right on that intersection of the rule of thirds. And you have the road with the perspective lines coming straight to him. You have a car facing him. You have trees that are just naturally framing and pointing into his face. You might not think that these elements were there intentionally because they're just wherever they were filming, but they set up this shot 100% intentionally to make you look where they wanted you to. So this was one that had a pretty clear um, foreground, middle ground, and background. All of these elements thought through by the people that made this movie and really applied to work here. Another iconic movie here, Fight Club. So we have a scene that has a ton of people here, right? But you're focusing on one of these figures and I don't even have to tell you who it is that you're focusing on. You know you're looking at Brad Pitt's character right there. He's not in the center. He's placed somewhat on the thirds and he's not exactly more or less in the foreground than some of the people around him. So what is making you look at him? Um, these are the questions that you want to ask yourself. And this is why you're studying these elements. So you can see that a lot of what's happening here is lighting elements. They clearly placed a spotlight right on him and everyone else is getting like this dim, maybe offset reflection of him. And then of course you have the reflection of the fact that he's, you know, shirtless in contrast to most of the people here being, wearing uh, shirts and other elements like that. So composition can go beyond just these tools I'm talking about. You can also think of it in terms of contrast and just using convenient tools, right? This set was purposely lit to spotlight Brad Pitt's character in this movie. So you can also do that and you'll see it all the time being used in comics, cartoons, um, movies, whatever it is. So there's ways to do this and make it believable without just like, overemphasizing that harsh spotlight. All right, one of the most iconic movie scenes here from the Titanic, right? Um, the compositional element I wanna talk about here is you guys are probably getting this by now. You see the rule of thirds, you probably see some of that leading lines of the boats, um, whatever those are, ropes. I'm not a boat person, guys, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> leading into these characters. But the thing that's drawing you to them, other than the fact that they're really the only thing in the picture, is the placement of their heads or right below their heads on the horizon line. 
This is a trick that naturally we just look towards the horizon line. It's kind of just something we do. It's where the camera's often pointed um, and the horizon generally exists in everything you look at, everything you take pictures of. So um, something that you'll see in film photography and art is they'll place an important element on the horizon line. And this is one of those moments where they're definitely placing in here, really emphasizing that fact of look at these two guys, look at this moment, feel this moment. And they also left a lot of negative space. So it's just something that you guys should think about where not everything has to be super complex. You don't have to have a room full of people. You don't have to have a room full of technology or things happening. You can have empty space as long as it's intentional and it fills the purpose of your composition, your story. So this one I just kind of added in for fun because I thought it was a nice shot. Um, pretty direct. We don't really have what I would kind of identify as a foreground, middle ground, background. You can argue that maybe that he's the middle ground and the back panels, the background, you know what I'm talking about. But really it's kind of like a black and white where all of this is linear. You got the character in the middle. He's basically the vanishing point of a one point perspective picture. And you have all these leading lines just pointing straight at him. It makes you curious about where he's going. It points to where he's going and it also points directly at him. It's almost virtually impossible to not look at this guy. And you can also go back to the contrast of the colors. Everything is stark white or black. You don't have any color around him. Not any of the panels are glowing certain colors here. It's just a white lit white room. And then he is a stark red. So these are kind of some of the elements. And sometimes, again, like I was talking about the Fight Club one, it can be kind of obvious. It can be really on the nose. But as long as you do it, let's say tastefully here, it, it's going to work and you're going to get a pretty good focal point. All right, so as I finish up the end of this drawing, this is gonna be the end of the video. I hope you guys liked this, I hope this was helpful. You should really try out this technique yourself practicing from these really well thought out movie moments here. It'll help you out a lot to study from professionals that have made it to the big screen. As always, I just wanna say thank you guys for watching my videos. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.